Hey, Supernatural family. This is Emily from Supernatural on the Rocks. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. Number one, it's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can also make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. Anchor is everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. So download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hello, welcome to the third episode of Supernatural on the Rocks. I am Emily. And I'm Mandy. And we are back with the third episode, which means season three of Supernatural. We finally and made it. Yes, we're back. I mean, watching a whole season of television takes some time, less time than it should, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> it should take a couple months, but it, it doesn't. Um, but it does take us some time to... Um, get our shit together. So we have arrived at season three of Supernatural. Um, This is a quick summary of the entire season pulled from the Supernatural fandom wiki. Um, The battle that brought him down, uh, well, really, the yellow-eyed demon is vanquished, but at a terrible price. The battle that brought him down released hundreds of demons from hell into an unsuspecting world, And it cost Sam his life. But a grief-stricken Dean made a deal with the crossroad demon, his soul for Sam's resurrection. Now Dean just has one year to live. One year to fight the unholy, the twisted, the ghoulish. One year to say farewell to Sam. And one year for Sam to search desperately for some way to save his brother. Mind-bending adventure awaits as the Winchester brothers continue their astonishing odyssey into the supernatural. And their personal odyssey into destiny. That's a pretty sweet summary of the season. I yeah, think. it is. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's like concise, but covers mm-hmm. all bases. It does. Well written. Exciting. So kudos to whoever wrote that. Would credit, but I don't know who you are. But yeah. We would props. credit, but the wiki didn't. So. <laughs> we would credit, but they didn't. So thumbs up. Congratulations. So, yes, here we are. The demons have been loosed upon the world. I don't know that the world is unsuspecting at this point. I Surely the world suspects. <laughs> I think That's... I think maybe yeah. there is some suspicion out there. Sam, Sam died. It was tragic. But, I mean, it's supernatural, so is it that yeah. tragic when you can come back already? I mean, and at this point, I feel like... There, there might be some characters that you could do a fake out death with, but like nobody thinks that Mm-mm. Sam or Dean is really off the show dead. Nope. Like that no. is that is the problem with having a cast that's not really ensemble. It's just two characters. Right. Yeah, the stakes are never going to feel that high. Yes, the. Between them, the yeah. the focus of this whole season is that Dean has made a deal with this crossroad demon, and he has a year to live before he is going to be dragged to hell. But does anyone... We see what happens at the end of the season, but how concerned is anyone really for Dean's life? They get stabbed, they get shot, they get beat up. But is anyone terribly concerned for their permanent death, even now at season yeah. three? And I think that is maybe, a f- I don't know if it's a failure, because I think maybe at this point, we're not supposed to be worried about their lives, but their souls? Is that yeah. now what we're supposed to be worried about? I mean that and that does sort of make sense but it's also like I don't know I do I do feel like one of the shortcomings of this season was that you weren't really worried about Dean dying. Mm-hmm. You weren't really worried or at least I wasn't. Really. And I I forgot pretty much how most of this went. There were a couple of standalone episodes that I could remember watching. Mm-hmm. 
But for the most part, like, I'd forgotten how things went down. Mm -hmm. Right. But what... Do we want to tackle right away? Like, spoiler alert, obviously, if you are listening to this podcast, you have seen Supernatural, right? Hopefully. Hopefully. Dean does go to hell. He does not escape the crossroad demon. And I actually, like, I I do have more thoughts on that that I want to wait until we've, like, worked our way there to share. Great. Um, Because it ties into the shortened season and the original plans Mm -hmm. because the season is only 16 episodes and it was shorter because of the writer's strike. So there were some elements of the season three storyline that got cut. Mm -hmm. And one of them is that Dean wasn't supposed to go to hell. Mm -hmm. Like that's not how the season was going to end. That writer's strike. Yeah. Surely there is a podcast out there that has dived into every Thing that was changed and ruined and improved upon because of the writer strike. I mean, that would be really interesting. I'm I'm actually going to make the argument that this was improved upon. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But, well, um, simply because of next season. Yeah. Do we want to just jump into episode one? Yeah, I think we can. Yeah, I think that's a good. I mean, we did this last episode yeah. last season was kind of run through the episodes because it you know the show follows a plot. It follows an arc. For the, for the most part, yeah, for the um, most part. you know, they are on a journey um, yeah. in the show. Um, I think, you know, with every TV show, sometimes episodes are filmed out of order. So acting choices maybe are not always in sync with the release of the episodes. But in general, episodes are mm-hmm. filmed in sequence. That is not always the case, but... Um, it is often. And there are there are a few side characters that are recurring this season, but I do think it's a little more interesting to talk about them in terms of how they're introduced yes. in the episodes. Yep. So we really, um, we kind of pick up um, with Sam and Dean dealing with the aftermath of an unknown number of demons being released from hell. Yep. And the first episode is the Magnificent Seven. So we have the the Seven Deadly Sins, basically. I was a little under... So the Seven Deadly Sins are kind of this archetype of sin and evil in um, Christianity and other Abrahamic religions. And these, like ass wipes are the seven deadly sins yeah well, I, was I was not sh- impressed by these guys no in fact like that is one of the notes i made on the episode was like wow lackluster opening to this really wide concept yep of like the world is full of demons now like really this is this is how you start off yeah because later we get the four horsemen of the apocalypse who are mm-hmm. pretty badass and i would think that the seven deadly sins earn better characters than some bar brawls. And And I I feel like that is also like, obviously when they were making season three of supernatural, they didn't know the show was going to last 15 seasons, Mm -hmm. but it it does have that problem where like it sets up things in early seasons that are supposed to be like terrifying, not Uh realizing in like, five more seasons, they're going to be completely av- overshadowed. <laughs> yeah, like, right. <laughs> because they have to keep raising the stakes. Yep. But yep. it doesn't really, like, it It hurts the rewatchability of things like mm-hmm. the season three opener. This dude in a leather vest is gluttony or whatever. Like, okay. Yeah. I could kick that dude's ass. You know, it, it does. Yeah, yeah, it's a little... um so they've met up with these fellow hunters who end up in a demon bar and he's one of them is forced to drink like Drano and that's how a deadly sin of millennia years old demon is gonna murder someone like okay Drano yeah yeah and they have you know they're both black characters who die right off in the season Uh, premiere so that's nice Supernatural really like it really starts out I mean, not that it hasn't already done some impressive work, but I feel like season three is the one that cemented the reputation as like the show that kills women 
and non-white minorities. This is not a good season for that. No. And it should be because it has two female like. Yeah. Side side characters, you know, but. Yes. Ruby. Ruby shows up in this first episode with her demon blade. Katie Cassidy later seen in Arrow. And oh, yeah. I'm sure I didn't know that was the same person. It is. Okay. It is a, she looks. A, yeah. Just looks different. Yeah. Shows. I mean. Yes, she shows up as Ruby 1.0, as a, a big bad, I guess a a question kind of? a questionable yeah. bad, and is immediately called a bitch and a skank. Yep. Because by again, Dean. this is this is mm-hmm. not a high point for Supernatural showing like no its best. Mm-mm writing or treatment of women not at all or anyone no i think if you took shots for every time dean calls one of the two lead women in this season a derogatory name you would die by the third or fourth episode i mean especially if you included in that list anytime he's slightly homophobic which we can all have our dean head cannons in terms of his sexuality or Mm -hmm. you know just canon but sure. at this point I'm, I'm just like side-eyeing the writers who definitely weren't planning that far ahead no and still got in some really i don't know weird homophobic jabs yeah and that served no purpose that it wasn't no. yeah it's a very early 2000s kind of attempt at subversive humor because he's what a tough yeah. No holds barred kind of a badass who makes fun of people. Like, all right. What a Okay. Watching it, like watching it gave me the same feeling as if I'm like channel surfing and land on a show and like in five minutes I'm like, well, I'm not the demographic for this. Mm, yes. Like, and I I mean, I loved Supernatural. Still do, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm working my way there. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. we're about to get into stuff in a couple of seasons that I haven't seen. But uh, oh, uh-huh. But yeah, I don't know. Just Dean's writing, mm, not not a fan. Yes, he's definitely, especially in this early half of the third season, is out there kind of lit. Well, he's a, he's pretending to live life to the fullest because he only has a yeah. year left, and it's certainly this carefree blase pretending like he's not scared shitless and about to die. You know, this mm-hmm. James Dean, devil may care, certainly hiding fear. But there's no need for the writers to cover that with homophobia and misogyny. Yep. That's a choice. Yep. You know, that doesn't need to be a characterization. That's a that's a writer's choice. So that's the start to season three. So it's a it's a doozy. Yeah. Um but, but it does did, it does give us um it does give us Ruby 1.0 who who is yes. an interesting character that I think probably got a bad rap by a lot of people for being a woman. Yeah, I liked her. I didn't remember really liking Ruby that much. But I don't right. know. It's, it 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 sort of goes back to the fact that the season was shortened and a lot of things were underdeveloped for me. Yes. But definitely. um but yeah, I, I liked the actress. Yeah, yep. Um, so we roll we roll out of this into the second episode. The kids are all right. Kids are all right. Yes. Um, where Dean has kind of forced Sam into visiting his old flame, Lisa, Lisa, who features heavily in fanfic. Yeah. Um. um... Mm-hmm. Someone he had <laughs> I, an affair with however long yeah. ago. I didn't, okay, I love a creepy kid episode. Um, <laughs> so I was inclined to like this one. This was not as good as the other creepy kid episodes before. Mm. Actually, it's not as good as other creepy kid episodes in this season. Mm-hmm. But um, but that's pretty much the only element of this episode I liked. I don't know, the force, the force sexualization of Dean Winchester. Uh Mm-hmm. It just grates on me a little. You didn't like Dean worried that he had a mini me out there this whole time? No. I mean, okay, I will say I liked it in the sense that we are starting to get the feeling of Dean 
recognizing that there might be more to his life than hunting. Mm -hmm. Even if it's not by choice when he thinks like he might accidentally have a kid. Mm -hmm. But given his lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. They really pushed hard for that kid to be a mini Dean. They really did. They didn't need to push that hard. No. No. It was kind of funny in a way I don't think it was meant to be. Yes, you're right. No, it, it did, they didn't need to push that hard. That kid could have had like one or two Dean isms that would have been like, uh, it could have signaled to the audience, like, oh shit, does yeah. Dean have a kid? Instead of like the hair, the jacket, the Literally music. Literally dressing him like. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yep, yep. Flinging a knife around, like, oh shit. Um, so, yes, they're, you know, the kids in town are being taken over by changelings. And that's our little lore for the episode are, are changelings who are not. They're fine. They weren't the, the scariest in town. Yeah. Um, but Sam has now um, made contact with Ruby, who is claiming to be... She claims to be a hunter as well, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but she is not. Ooh, what is she? she? She is also a demon. Yes. Surprise, demons aren't all bad. They aren't all reckless, um, v- violent, heart. I was going to say soulless, but that's questionable. Heartless yeah. uh, killing machines. She is a demon. Um, and she says that she is there to help and save Dean Winchester. Thoughts, feelings. It's interesting, I- right? It's an interesting turn to have yeah. their most hated enemy come offer some help and like i'm i it makes me wonder how much foresight they had into the demon plot line because like they they do try to i don't know they're insinuating a lot of demons into the plot at this point not just demons but um Mm -hmm. whereas before most of the the people that they've known that like were recurring were like bobby or you know joe right like other hunters or people mm-hmm. on their side. I can't remember. Oh my God. I can't remember the woman's name. The black Ellen. Woman. Oh, no. um, Missouri. Yeah. Yeah. Missouri. Um, yeah. People like that. But this season we have, you know, the first appearance of the trickster and then like Bella who has her own thing going on. Mm-hmm. And Ruby. But people who are morally questionable. Yeah. Just like the Winchesters. Yes. Who think they have the moral high ground the entire time, but who are actually out there killing things left and right. Are we? Yeah. I was going to say, like, I I guess they are pretty much shown as just the heroes at this point. Yes. But they really are out there killing things left and right. They are. And I think it's, they kind of do this in this season where they, they being the writers kind of, Mm -hmm. and purposely or not, who knows, can't ask them, but kind of juxtapose the Winchester's, beliefs and morality and actions against those of the creatures that they kill so you know they've got they've got ruby here who is a demon but she is offering help because there are things out there worse than her um and they kind of immediately just want to gank her yeah Um, I loved the, the, I don't know about your subtitles, but the subtitles for gank was bizarre <laughs> on my end. I was like, G-A-N-C-H? Gank? Oh, I don't think I was looking at the screen when it... It's like, that doesn't seem right. <laughs> um, gank? Gank? It's German? But yeah, I think, and they do this with some other of the creatures kind of throughout the season of not kind of ob- more obliquely asking who is the bad guy, obviously, to the creatures. Dean and Sam are the bad guys. Mm-hmm. I mean, we've definitely, like, even though she's human, we've got a parallel with Bella mm-hmm. uh, and Dean. Yeah. Which of them is worse? Mm-hmm. Is there a worse? Dean obviously hates her, but... Oh, he, so much. So much that it's I like, mean, Jesus, hates- man. He hates Ruby a lot, too, but I think he hates Bella more. Oh, he threatened to... Yeah. I think he... I mean, I think the only reason he didn't actively kill her is that it's it was a show on the CW. Yeah. Like, and I think they just can't murder other humans on the CW show. 
Yeah. (laughs) I think that may have been the only reason. That's the only Um, thing that makes sense because you cannot tell me a man with that little impulse control wouldn't have just like straight up murdered her. Yeah. So, so Bella Talbot, we meet in this next episode, bad day at black rock. Um, Sam and Dean have gotten a call alerting them that someone has broken into John's secret storage room. You know, something we've never seen before. Yeah. Might have been useful at some point. There is a cursed rabbit's foot, which I think is kind of cute. Like, of all of the weird shit they've got, something so cliched is a rabbit's foot. But it's one of those kind of genie wish things where if you if you touch the rabbit foot, you get a lot of good luck. But when you lose the rabbit foot, you die. You know. Okay. Was there an X Files episode that was very similar to this? Yes. Okay. Because as I was watching, I was like, "This seems so familiar." Like, am I remembering watching this, or am I remembering watching the X Files? Because I've rewatched that series more. There were, yeah, it was a later, a later one where a guy could make like those Rube Goldberg things oh, yeah and yeah. He, he won like a ton of money playing poker against a mobster and he was winning money for like his sick his neighbor's sick yeah. kid oh, yeah I remember that now yeah yeah and he could like he like fell through something and he escaped without can, yeah yeah you can really at a couple of points in this season you can really see that x-files still had a strong influence on yes. <laughs> there's on always the an x-files files. episode that matches <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so, you know, Sam has already touched the rabbit's foot because, of course, otherwise there wouldn't be an episode. Yeah. Um, Dean buys lottery tickets, which is the first thing they should do because they've been stealing money. Yeah, really. (laughs) I I do appreciate the continuity of, like, occasionally being reminded that, like, while they are trying to save humans from demons, they're also, like... Dead broke. Committing felonies left and right. Uh Uh-huh. Yep. (laughs) Credit card fraud. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Which is something that gets lost later with the bunker where they just magically yeah. have, isn't it Charlie who just magics them some oh. credit cards? Or It's like, okay, but it was kind of fun when they had to hustle poker. Yeah. But yeah, so this other thief shows up, Bella, played by, what's her name? Lauren. Yes. Cohen. Yes. Also yes. from The Walking Dead. Yes. Which is funny because in one of these episodes, Dean actually says The Walking Dead. Oh, <laughs> when they're talking about zombies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, the, he said the thing. The, he said the thing. He's from the thing. Yes. So Bella comes, mm-hmm. steals it. That's what she does, causing Sam's luck to uh, just get the fuck out of there. So now they have to get the rabbit's foot back, etc., so forth. Shenanigans. Yes. I do want to say this episode marks a very important first. Biggersons. Uh, no, it is the first oh. time Bobby uses the phrase "idiot." Oh, yeah, amazing. Yeah, we'll have to do one of our little posts with just yeah. "idiot." I did notice that they go to a Biggersons, the I diner. Oh, okay. They just always eat at a Biggersons. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, they at some point Gordon is in prison. Gordon, what's his face from the previous season? is shown talking about the opening of the Devil's Gate. He's still around. He thinks Sam isn't even human, which, questionable. Yeah. Is, not, is he totally wrong? I don't know. There's kind of some some stuff about John's storage container. Maybe there's some stuff in there they could have found useful along the way. When, kind of at the end of the episode, Bella shoots Sam in the shoulder as if it's not a big deal. Yeah. And I fucking hate this in TV and movies. Do you know how many vital arteries and blood vessels are in your shoulder how many tendons and bones like Like, uh, you would need physical therapy at the very least as you heal from that yes you can bleed out from a shoulder gunshot wound like and she just shoots in there like yes i shot him in the shoulder that's like like duh like no that's bad yes that's bad unrealistic tv violence (laughs) The stabbing with stakes, totally fine. Mm -hmm. Shooting someone in the shoulder, terrible. Yeah. So, you know, by three episodes in, we have met two women that Dean irrationally hates. Yeah. I mean, they're not their antagonists, that's fine. But, like, the vitriol he aims at them is intense. It is. 
And and I know like part of it is that they're being given more to do, but I definitely like as I watch these episodes compared Dean's attitude to the women to his attitude to equally or more overtly evil men. Mm-hmm. And like, oh god, he just he hates the women so much. So much. He will get off a couple of one-liners as he kills other kinds of demons, but mm-hmm. uh yeah. So, so many uses of the word bitch in yeah. this season. Mm-hmm. It's just insane. And it, you know, the next episode, they are investigating a bunch of deaths in this little town that has just been taken over by gamblers and drunks and whatnot. And there's a demons have infiltrated to make them, I don't know, have a party town. And... Dean automatically hits on the bartender because that's what he does, right? So, like, a woman who is antagonistic towards him, a bitch, and a slut, and a skank. The hot bartender, a target. Yeah. (laughs) With no distinction. (laughs) Just, like, boom. Hot woman in a low-cut shirt. Done. I have so much, like, emotional compartmentalization over this because I'm going to say fan fiction helps balance it out. Mm-hmm. Like the idea of Dean as a character who went from point A, which is just emulating all of the horrible male influences in his life to like point B at the end of the season. I mean, at the end of this, the series, but like those fucking writers were not thinking that far. They were not thinking, Oh, he's going to meet someone who changes his life and go from right. this womanizing character to no hookups for like the last three seasons. And, essentially in married a to an angel exactly they weren't thinking that Mm-mm. so while i can understand the characterization of dean like no it's just i would have fucking fired those writers yeah I'm and the- they were struggling by the end of the season anyway but still and the whole time people were like looking at these scripts going yes that's the appropriate amount of times to call a woman a bitch in this tv show or a skank or a whore yeah. or all mm-hmm. the things i i actually did start a list of the words but it was depressing me too much so i just deleted it and was like <laughs> oh, I'm cool. not gonna <laughs> yeah i one of my notes is just all caps that says dean has to stop calling women bitches yeah and I mean, it is mostly Dean, but mm-hmm. seriously, even Sam does it more times than I'm comfortable with. Mm-hmm. He does. But yeah, I just, it's fucking aggravating because it's like, and I, I, I don't have the statistics on the demographics directly in front of me, but obviously the, um, the number of women watching this show far out, far exceeds yeah. the number of men. Or people who identify as men, people who identify as women. Like, we're the ones watching it. You don't need to call us bitches by proxy. We thank you. We're good. We're paying your bills at the conventions. You can stop now. Yeah, really. (laughs) We are keeping some of those minor actors. Yeah. (laughs) We're keeping you paid. If you could just not get the fuck off. I did like the conversation that Dean has with the woman who turns out to be a fucking demon, Mm -hmm. which who could see that coming about what is a demon versus a human and Lucifer. And and it's kind of the first reference as Lucifer as real. And again, it's, it's always funny to me when Dean is like, what do you mean Lucifer is real? Like how at this point, why would you question anything? Why? Why would you question any? You have seen vampires and werewolves and ghouls and poltergeists and fucking didn't they find? Yeah, they have an angel like you. Yeah. If an angel's real, then so is fucking Lucifer, who is just an archangel. Like, just believe it. And then she asks him, like, "Is there? You don't you believe in God? Like, I want to. Like, wouldn't by nature? Wouldn't if there's an angel? Doesn't there have to be a God? Yeah. Like, come on, my dude. I mean, their whole." career concept is centered around demons yes like that's that's it yeah. so like, all yeah. of these things in one way or another are, usually go back to demons yes it's just funny his like well i don't know maybe uh maybe i don't believe like okay and then what do you think you're killing it's just someone with a really bad stomach ache we move on from that episode to bedtime stories, which was one of those that I did remember. I lo- this is actually one of the ones I remember too, and uh, this is a much better creepy kid episode. Yep, it's kind of a standalone, but 
but it's a, it's a fairy tale episode with I'm Red like, Riding Hood I'm, and I like the the supernatural version. I mean, like, I guess Demon of the Week episodes mm-hmm. or you know, Monster of the Week. I like those better than the arc episodes. Usually, I'm gonna say now mm-hmm. because we're gonna get to a point where I'm like all about the arc storyline. Sure, I'm sure as it relates to a specific character. Mm-hmm. Not saying mm-hmm. it, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but anyway, uh, yeah, I love creepy kids. I love creepy grandmas, and this episode <laughs> had both. It did, unfortunately, have a little bit of homophobia from Dean. <laughs> a little bit. Couldn't be entirely good. Mm-mm. But, yeah, just good episode. I didn't even take that many notes. Just all caps, creepy grandma <laughs> and the creepy kid. Yep. I like. It was just kind of fun to watch, like, the mm-hmm. hikers coming out of the woods, and you see the little house, mm-hmm. and you're like, don't go in there. Yeah. <laughs> high on the window. The high on the window. So like it's just cute little details and then Yeah. <laughs> don't do it. I love I love those older actors who are just playing sweet. Yes. And I like oh, I don't know. I standalone episodes really are they're make or break on the quality of the actors in that specific episode. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And I feel like the grandma and the little girl, just just a fantastic casting. Yes. Yeah. A little bit weird that the adults, when still looked just like Snow White, but uh, I, 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 I guess I can understand that level of realism not quite being there. Right, right. I feel like that's not what someone who had been in a coma for 20 years would look like. <laughs> Makeup perfectly done. Is that, is that that's not how you look? Is, it, it's... <laughs> is that, do you wake up like that? I do. I noticed while watching this episode that I had to Google and look at the time. And I'm guessing this is just one of many little like Easter eggs that I don't usually pick up. But the, the victim of the the wolf um and the doctor are named after characters in south park (laughs) (laughs) kyle and and mr garrison oh that's funny i hate that i know that i haven't watched south park in 15 years i would not have caught that oh also in one of the one of the earlier episodes they reference grissom from csi Which I didn't catch that, but while looking up the South Park thing, I saw that on the trivia list. See, if that if I was a show writer or a TV mm. writer, that is a hundred percent what I would do yeah. is name every fucking character after a popular, like uh, any cop would be yeah. from either like CSI or Brooklyn Nine Nine. Every FBI agent would yeah. be Scalder and Molly every time. And I think, um, yeah, I think it's in the, the scene that yeah, they were like, I don't, someone was on the phone being like, oh, we're going to need CSI in, better call Grissom or something yeah. like that. <laughs> Anytime there was like a doctor, like you need to get Dr. McDreamy, they yeah. would just use their, you know, they would just be Grey's Anatomy characters or ER character names. Yeah. The legal department would constantly be like, you can't. You have to stop using copyrighted names. <laughs> like, but I want to. That would be so fun. Every episode title would just be an X Files episode name. Yeah. Like I would just use yeah. It's just like a couple of words rearranged. Yeah. Or, you know. Yeah. That would be fun. <laughs> All right. So from bedtime stories, we go into Red Sky at morning. Yep. Which is a Bella-heavy Bella. episode. It is a Bella-heavy episode. I thought that was interesting because it's like setting her up as a character we're going to keep. Yeah. And and I thought that mm-hmm. until I, you know, read some more later on. K- um, kept watching the show. <laughs> yeah, kept watching. It's amazing how you keep watching and you learn more things about yeah, It's so weird. Um, but yeah, no, at that point, I couldn't remember. I, like, I was assuming Bella would be a love interest. Oh, uh uh-huh. Because I didn't remember how her storyline ended. But this episode feels like it's setting her up for at least, like you said, a character we keep, if not an actual love interest. Like a Bobby who kind of comes in with a case or maybe is a little, like, 
shows up when they're both hunting something like, ooh, I've got it first. Oh, it's me. And then they go away for a couple episodes. Yeah. But yeah, so this episode has a plot that's about people drowning when they're not near water. Mm -hmm. No one fears that. Yeah, no. Completely normal turn of events. But yeah, I don't know. The, The episode feels, while it does have a plot, it feels a lot more about trying to insert some arc storyline back into it definitely yeah yeah i mean and it's giving bella some characterization we found out um that she's being paid by the murder victim's family i think so she's she's involved she's not just there on her own because she's a a, i don't know not a not a bounty hunter but she's a contracted thief yeah, I guess. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's basically what she does. Like, she steals things and then sells them. Yeah, yeah. Or, you know, sells her services stealing things. Yeah. And so, it's a, it's a job. Yes, her, her job is to steal things, which, I mean, it's not the worst job that's on Supernatural, yeah. is it? And I do like um, one of her lines when Sam asks her how she sleeps at night. And she says, on silk sheets, rolling naked in money. I'm like, you're really selling this career choice to me. I know. Like, well, she has nice clothes and seems to be doing okay. But yet she comes on to Dean in this episode, which is one reason why I thought that they Mm -hmm. were going to go the love interest route as opposed to the he really, really hates her route. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yep. Yeah, he gets dressed up in that suit. He does the mm-hmm. slow walk down the staircase like he's the yeah. date in a rom-com. He's pretending like he hasn't hooked for food and lived out of his car. Really? He's got that line, don't objectify me. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, Dean. Yeah. You, <laughs> I mean, you first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you need some therapy for that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is a little. Let's talk about this for a while, shall we? How do you feel about this? You know, she obviously is going to steal the Hand of Glory, which is what they're all about. So that's the, oh, so that's the um, lore here is the Hand of Glory, which is something we've seen in other um, films and movies and films and movies. Same Mm -hmm. thing. Films and TV shows and books and whatnot. Um, So the other piece of the lore in the episode is that people are dying who see this um, ghost ship, um, but the spirit is going after people who have killed their own family members, right? Yep. And then Bella sees the ship. Foreshadowing. And then she gives them money at the end of the episode. Oh, yeah. I forgot that. Which I feel is like a bazillion times more money than they have seen in a Uh, long time. Yeah. And Sam says some garbage to Dean, like, don't worry about me, worry about yourself. Like, has that ever worked on Dean? Literally, all he does is worry about other people. Literally. He might be a a little bit of an asshole sometimes, Mm -hmm. but, like, at the heart of him, which we will get to in a few episodes. Mm -hmm. um, Yeah, no, his entire life, he's just been trained to, like, protect his family. Mm -hmm. Daddy's little soldier. Yep. He's doing a pretty good job. He is. Protecting Winchester at all costs. <laughs> um, the only other thing I liked about this episode is that during Sam's exorcism, he says the word Castiel. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Somewhere in there, you just heard Castiel. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? Oh. Have you summoned him? <laughs> is that why? Yeah. So I was like, woo. So we move on to Fresh Blood. Yes. Um, I am not a vampire person. Mm. So this was not my favorite episode. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But do you know who was in this episode? Uh, who? Harmony from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Playing another vampire. <laughs> <laughs> I was um, like, really just made the full circle loop there. They also got in a second, like, Easter egg. Because Lucy is the... First victim of Dracula in Bram Stoker's Dracula. Oh, yes. So the Lucy in this episode is the... Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm just assuming that was a reference. I like it. I'll take it. 
There are quite a few episodes this season with vampires. They really yeah, kind of were. lean. I think vampires fall off the grid in later seasons. These first seasons are like vampire, vampire, vampire mm-hmm. as a constant big bad. And then later it's like, they're just not worth it until the mm-hmm. final fucking episode. <laughs> When suddenly yeah. Dean Winchester can't kill a vampire to save his life. Literally. So. Fuck that. Um, so yes. so Harmony here was, is someone who is dosed with vampire blood and doesn't realize it. And then how does that vibe with morality and, and murdering someone for being a monster when they don't even know that they're a monster? Yeah, and it wasn't, wasn't their choice. Not, yeah, it's not your choice to become a vampire yeah. if you just get dosed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we we also have Gordon back. Gordon Gordon. Gordon Gordon. I keep wanting to call him Gordon Brown. but that <laughs> Because is it's me. Sterling K. Brown. Exactly. That yeah. is me yeah. combining the names. Yeah. Gordon Walker. There we go. But yeah, so we have Gordon Who also and gets turned into a vampire. Yes. And they now. They really are vampire heavy vampire heavy but now that he's a vampire he's ready to kill sam with his big badness yeah but in the the touching episode ending moment dean teaches sam how to fix baby because that's how men relate to each other lug nuts and oil No no emotions just teach him how to fix a car no emotions just wrenches I guess that is how his daddy taught him to do it. <laughs> Literally is. Literally. <laughs> That's how it works. Yep. So uh, now it's Christmas. So yes, it's a very supernatural Christmas. Yes, which um, I, I feel like just the fact that it's like middle of summer still here, it kind of lost some of the ambiance for me. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Uh, I liked... I like the concept of an anti-Santa. Yes. Yep. I made a note that I was like, I would I would watch an entire episode about anti-Santa. Anti-Santa. And and, and Santa? Something, yeah. And, Antis, and okay. Tifa? That's very hard to say. Anti-Santa? Anti-disestablishmentarian. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Title of the episode. But yeah, we get some flashbacks mm-hmm. in this episode. Little baby Winchesters. Yeah. Such excellent casting. Always love it. Yep. I don't know. I find it hard to believe that... I don't know how old Sam was supposed to be in the flashbacks, but I really find it hard to believe that he got to be that old and didn't know what their dad was doing or what Dean did, if Dean got all of this training. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Did did, did they just, like, send Sam skipping off of school and Dean just, like, stayed home all day to get trained? Maybe actually, I guess. yeah. <laughs> I mean, maybe Sam's just a, an idiot. The flashback portion is basically like Sam learning, or or Sam telling scene the uh, Dean that he's read their dad's journal and that he knows you know the truth about mm-hmm. monsters. And then the actual present day episode is monsters, monsters all the way around, all the way down. I was, this is one of those episodes where I'm like, were they trying to play gay when they were, um, or w- when they were trying to get the wreath? Because like the, the concept of the yeah, episode, I wasn't totally. The vibe was weird. Yeah, it was very weird. Mm-hmm. Although I did write down like, you know, this couple is evil, <laughs> keeping a pagan god in their Sears Craftsman home. Yeah. <laughs> um, just like you know, something's not right here. They're too happy. Yeah, I mean, I, I usually love a Christmas episode. This wasn't my favorite. It wasn't. The the only part that I found really amusing were the um the gods. Mm-hmm. Basically. I did yeah, I liked their like no one no one respects us anymore. Like Yeah. <laughs> kind of dug that. I got Dean having his feels over Christmas because he's dying. Yeah. Or well, he he's not dying. He's he will dead. he yeah. will be dragged to hell, and this is like his last Christmas. Not of that Sam being a macho man and like being like that's why I can't do Christmas. Yeah. 
although as if they've had such wonderful Christmases before, yeah. which is like, you know, you guys haven't really been doing them previously, but I thought it was a, it was a f- fine episode, just not my, yeah. my faves. I expect more. And, and maybe <clears throat> this is the fault of the X-Files that I expect a Christmas episode Ooh. to be really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. X-Files has some good ones. How the ghost stole Christmas. Ugh, yeah. Truly an amazing episode that I could probably act out. So Not that good. we'll do that on this podcast, but I no, could. No. <laughs> act, scene one, to, act one. If anyone wants to bounce some money at us, we'll uh, make a Patreon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you need to be able to pay for that. That's The Patreon account is simply us reading yes. X-Files scripts, but only the good ones. So... <laughs> Obviously, at the end of the episode, Sam decorates the hotel room because that's how you celebrate Christmas is with twinkly lights. Of course. And porn. And, and porn. <laughs> because they're I, too I, open with each other about they porn. Are. I don't understand I it. I don't either. And like, maybe once is kind of funny between writers and a writer a writing yeah. room. But I, I don't know if we're prudes. I don't think we are, but like two brothers who spend 23 hours a day together. I mean, like, where do you expect him to make use of that porn? In the the shower? I mean. Yeah. I guess that's where the. (laughs) We still have that mini episode to release, but like, (laughs) they are in the top 10. Oh, that's true. In ships. I mean, there was a strong canonical case for Wincest at this point, I'd say just in the fact that we're supposed to draw our own conclusions here. One brother gives another brother porn when they never sleep in separate rooms. Come on. It's a lot to take in. And I not saying I want it. No, (laughs) just saying it's there. It's there. Yeah. And the writers need to account for that and need to apologize. Yes. I will be waiting on my apology. At writersroom.com. You've been listening to Supernatural on the Rocks, a podcast by OTR Productions. A huge thank you to our sound editor, Adriana, and our podcasts, who secretly run the show. For more episodes, download us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, or wherever you get your podcasts. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and more at SPN on the Rocks. If you'd like to support the podcast, you can subscribe to our Patreon account at patreon.com slash glee on the rocks. Subscribers get ad-free episodes, exclusive mini episodes, deep diving into the fandom, salty opinions, and more. So until next time, this has been The Road That Was. <laughs>